You had said in your panel yesterday that you want effectively Wall Street to bless you and the other publicly traded oil companies to pump more. Yes. What is that? I mean, I know what that means, but why do you need Wall Street to sort of say this is okay, otherwise you think they'll crush your stock? Well, both Wall Street and government officials need to realize that oil and gas are going to be needed for decades to come. Uh, and they're essential to having a smooth and affordable energy transition. The key challenge, Brian, is investment. We're not investing enough. The IEA does a World Energy Outlook every year, and they have four scenarios in it. Uh, and in every scenario, more oil and gas is needed. And a reasonable estimate for that investment is about $450 billion a year of investment that needs to go into oil and gas to keep global oil and gas supply meeting global demand. Uh, the last five years, we've been under that number. So, so it's key. Yes, we need to invest more in clean energy, okay. but we also need to invest more in global oil and gas to have an affordable, just, and secure energy transition. You've got to remember, the United States is energy independent, so we ought to play to that strength and not have politicians or investors saying, you know, we don't want you investing in the business. Some political leaders say, we don't want more oil and gas five years from now, and now they're saying, now we want more oil and gas. We need to have the green light to invest more in the business. Our own company, uh, our budget uh, this year is up 30%. From $1.9 so billion dollars to $2.6 billion. And our production this year over the year is going to grow 30%. I know Joe and Becky have questions as well. Becky? Yeah, hey, thanks, Brian. Um, John, it's really good to see you. Just talking about what Brian was just mentioning, this idea that the oil companies would like cover from the administration so that their shareholders don't push back, so you don't see something like what happened with ExxonMobil, where a very small shareholder can come in and, and, and push this ESG um, sort of methodology and say, this is what we want. I mean, isn't it a case that the markets kind of will cure this at some point? There are going to be new investors that come into the oil companies at this point, maybe new investors who are have a stronger voice about what they'd like to see. I know we keep hearing about this key code word from all of the oil companies right now that they are disciplined. But when you see oil at north of $120 a barrel, I mean, it's one thing to be disciplined. It's another thing to, to miss an opportunity. And I understand your points entirely about wanting the administration to commit to longer term issues so that you can actually deploy the capital. But isn't it just a case where you're going to be getting different shareholders now? Well, you know, I think the key, Becky, and it's a great question, is uh, it's a matter of shareholder capitalism and stakeholder capitalism. And when you're running a business, you have to make high returns for uh, your shareholders. That's uh, basis, uh, basically a license to operate. But also, it's how you do it. It's how you deal with the community. It's how you deal with the environmental footprint. You ha it's not either or. It's both. And I think the key thing and one of the things our industry has to do a better job of is educating people. So we have climate literacy, energy literacy, and economic literacy. You need all three to have sustainable development. And I think too many people were just focused on the climate, not enough on the energy and the economic. And that's a key difference. And it's, a ma it's not either or, it's and.